Section 6.1, example 3. We're going to get into graphing exponential functions. So let's make a table of values before we graph. So f of x is 2 to the x. And I'll make a table. For x, we can choose anything. I'm going to choose negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, just to get a lot of points. We might not need this many in the future. Go ahead and get a graph set up. Maybe you already have graph paper. And then let's start plugging in. So 2 to the negative 2 will be 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. So negative 2 and 1 fourth. We go left negative 2 up to 1 fourth. Um, 2 to the negative 1, we just flip immediately and we get 1 over 2 to, two to the 1, which is just 1 half. So negative 1, and then we go up to 1 half. I don't really know the shape yet. Let's get a couple more. 2 to the 0. 0 powers are 1. So we get 0 and 1. So we just go up to 1. This is not a line, so don't graph it yet. 2 to the 1 power is 2. So 1 and 2. So over to 1, up to 2. All right, let's try two more. 2 squared is 4. So my next point is over 2, up to 4. And now we can see it's starting to jump a little. That's what exponential functions do. So I went up to 3 just so you could visually see what this jump is doing. So 2 cubed is 8. So at 3, it's going to jump all the way up to 8. So we're going to have a curve that's flat on the left side. It's going to go through 0, 1, and then it's going to spike up on the right side. And that's an exponential function. It should be smooth, nice and smooth. Yeah. Let's try one more. So let's do 1 half to the x. So let's see what these fractions do instead. So get a graph set up, and then we'll make a table. So I'm just going to do negative 2 through 2. That should be enough points now that we've seen one shape. So if you're feeling confident, go ahead and plug those in without me and come back to the video. Um, if you want to do it with me, just stay on the video. So we'll do 1 half to the negative 2 power. That tells me to flip it, so that's 2 squared or 4. So we go left to two, negative 2 and then we go up to 4. 1 half to the negative 1 power tells me to flip it, so it becomes 2 to the 1, which is 2. So we go over to negative 1 and we go up to 2. 1 half to the 0, anything to the 0 power is always 1. So we get 0 and 1. 1 half to the 1 power would be just 1 half. So 1 and 1 half. And then finally, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So we're getting the same numbers, just kind of in different spots. And it looks like we actually get the same shape, but backwards. So we're really tall on the left side, and then we flatten out on the right side. So they look like the same shape, but opposite. So let's go over the graphs overall, because um, they'll always look pretty similar. So overall, an exponential function will always look like this. Um, when my base is bigger than 1, it's going to be flat on the left, and then it's going to go up on the right. We say that that's increasing. When the base is bigger than 1, the function is increasing, or we say it grows exponentially. When the base is less than 1, bigger than 0 because it's always positive, but less than 1, um, it's going to be really tall on the left side and it's going to decrease fast and then it's going to flatten out on the right. We say that it's decreasing, or sometimes we call that decay. It decays exp exponentially. You'll notice in both cases, we get a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 because the graph flattens out. It doesn't cross 0, it just flattens out. The domain is all real numbers, which means we can plug in anything for x. 
but the range is different, the y values. So looking visually, they're never equal to one, zero and they are never negative, so my lower will be zero and they just go up to infinity. So zero to infinity will be my range. Um, I noticed the y-intercept is zero, one for both cases. That's coming from the idea that b to the zero is always equal to one, regardless of the base. So zero powers always make one. And we don't have any x-intercepts. And then it will they'll always be continuous and one to one. Um, continuous, right, we're not picking up our pencil. One to one, it passes that vertical line test. So let's just graph two more in this video. So let's do two to the x plus one. So I'm gonna start with two to the x. Um, I'm just gonna find maybe two points on the graph to help us with the transformations. So if we have two to the x, uh, I'm gonna do the easy points, zero and one, and then one and two, because two to the one is two. It'll just help us see the transformations a little bit better. So what kind of transformation is going on here? It looks like we have a horizontal shift. We have one of those f of x plus c's inside parentheses. So we're gonna shift to the left by one. And so by having the two points, I can visualize the shifts a little bit better. So zero, one is going to shift over to negative one, one, right? The y value is not changing, we're just shifting to the left. We can draw it on the same graph. And then one, two shifts over, so that would shift over to zero, two. And then it makes the exact same shape. So exponentials, I think, are a little bit harder to visually see the, sh the shape changing because they're all so similar. So I like to just plot a couple points to see them. The shape looks very similar, right, even with the shift. Let's try example five. So we have f of x is two minus three to the x. So our base graph will be three to the x. Looks basically the same as two to the x. That's why I'm gonna just add two points so we have 0, 1, and then we would have 1, 3. Because if I plug in 1, I just get a 3. So I'm going to fix that a little. There we go. Just to get the steepness a little bit more accurate. So they all look really similar, but the steepness is different based on the base. And so let's do the transformation. So the first transformation is a negative, which tells me to reflect the graph about, since the negative's on the outside, we reflect about the x-axis, which means it's just upside down. So now we go through zero, negative one, and then we go through one, negative three. Right, we're just flipping it upside down. And then the two tells me to do what? The two tells is a vertical transformation by up two. So we go one, two, one, two. Oops, one. I went up by three, one, two. And then we just make that same shape. Pretend the steepness is a little bit better. And so the purple graph would be my final graph. So I just think by plotting a point or two, it helps you with the vertical and horizontal shifts, um, just because the shape is a little bit harder to see the shifts. If you really don't want to do shifts, you can totally just make a table as well. So what happens if I plug in zero to the actual graph that we want? Two minus three to the zero means two minus one, or one, and zero, one is on my graph, check. What happens when I plug in one? Two minus three to the one means two minus three, 
or negative one. And yep, that's on my graph. Um, but if you were graphing it with a table only, you'd probably need a couple more points. So shifts, you don't need as many points. So if you wanna use the table method, use more points, but otherwise you can also use this as well. Yeah, but I thought it would be good to refresh on the transformations back from chapter two, maybe three, two. Um, but it's been a while, so it's always good to refresh on that old stuff. 